And I had examples of this as well recently where someone had their royal in Iraq and it was really tightly coiled up and it was hugged by the walls. It was that small of a tub. And she moved it up into a bigger tub and it was in the middle, like in that picture of that Canova one. I'll go back for, you, for the example. It's quite a good example, actually. So Canova, it's not touching the sides. It was in the middle like that. And she was like, oh, it stopped eating. And everyone was like, it's the size of the tub. Like, it's too big. And I was like, why are we talking about the size of the tub and not thinking about the micro of what's happening in the, in the tub? So before, it was, does anyone know what positive thick metaxis is? So basically, it's when you, you self-soothe, basically, from touching objects or like in a tight space. That's why I like tight spaces, it's positive thick metaxis. That's why, say like in the summer, and you have a sheet rather than a quilt, but you're used to the heavy quilt because you like the positive thing about taxes on yourself and you struggle to sleep. That's me anyway. I'm just assuming everyone's like that, but that's just me. Um, so basically what happens before is that that animal was able to hug itself by that tight coil as well as being hugged by the tub. So it's getting positive thigma taxis all around. When they move it outwards, it's not getting that anymore. So it's not touching the sides, it's just sat in the middle. So the, the only opportunity it has to, to get that positive thigma taxis is from itself. Or if it wants to do the walls, what's it going to do? It's going to have to press itself against the corner. But to press itself against the back corner and the left side, it's going to have to open itself up and not have that positive thing of from hugging itself. So you've changed the entire scenario of that, that snake could have tight hugged and then hugged by the walls in a tight space. It's no longer a tight space because it's not touching, being touched all around it. Do you know how we'll fix that? Hide. Hide. Uh, I commented and said, maybe try to hide and explain all of this. And she was like, do you want to know what our response was? The rack is the hide. So I gave, I gave her the solution. I gave her what, what possibly could be the solution. Yeah. Possibly what could be the solution. And because of, so, like I said about this, so much indoctrination, this dogmatic information that forced you down to this narrow lane thinking, she couldn't even perceive that she needed to hide. How have we got to the point where you've been, people have been force-fed so much indoctrination and dogmatic information that, that we can't even common sense think about it. And that's the problem. We've got so much indoctrination and dogmatic information that people are now in these narrow, narrow lanes of thought that they can't even think outside the box. And even thinking outside the box to give it a hide is not really that far-fetched, is it? But that's the stage we've got to.